What is mineral processing? Mineral processing is the process of separating valuable minerals from ore. Imagine you have a chocolate chip cookie, and that is your ore. And the chocolate chips represent your valuable minerals, and the cookie dough is the waste rock. Your job as a mineral processor is to figure out how to extract the chocolate chips in the most efficient manner. But it is not as simple as that. Mineral processors need to have a strong understanding of physics, mineralogy, and chemistry to find the optimal method to process the ore. When you first receive the ore from the haul trucks, you will need to reduce the size of the ore through a series of crushing and grinding stages. This is where the physics and mineralogy comes in. Afterwards, the size reduced ore will proceed to the recovery stage, where the valuable minerals will be separated from the ore and usually, it is done based on their surface chemical properties. As you gain more experience, you can even venture into different specialties such as process automation, developing nano-drying technologies, or dive into electronics recycling. If you have a passion for physics and chemistry, and you like to design, analyze, and optimize processes, then you should consider a career in mineral processing. To be honest, the course is child. Mm. It child me, I will not lie. Because I went to varsity with the mentality that I'm smart. Mm. People will tell me to that you are smart, you can be anything that you want to be. Mm. So when I went with that mind, it's unlike at, in high school when you, you could go write a test without uh, studying for it and still pass. Mm. Mm. There you have to put in the hard work. Yeah. Hello, hello, my friend, to welcome to another episode of Rolling with Spudanator. Uh, today we are joined by uh, Jeanette. Uh, Jeanette is a metallurgy trainee um, here at the mine. So we're just going to have a talk with her just to find out what metallurgy is all about, the challenges that she, she's facing currently. And uh, what do you have to do to become a metallurgist? So yeah, welcome to the show, Jeanette. Thank you, Sue. Thank you so much for coming through. So yeah, just take me from the the beginning. Um, what led you to choose metallurgy as a as a as a career? Okay, I'm Jeanette. I was born and raised in Soweto, mm -hmm. so I wasn't exposed to a lot of career guidance or so. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I decided I wanted to study mining engineering, uh -huh. uh, applied for mining uh -huh. and then at UJ academically I qualified because they required 60% nerds and 60% physics. Right, yeah. But then the obstacle was that I had to have a company that was going to offer me P1, P2 oh. before they could take me in. Oh. So while I was there asking, trying to understand what else can I study, Somebody said to me, hi man, there's a course that is not far from mining. Mm -hmm. It has some minerals in it. Mm -hmm. Believe you me, I did not know what metallurgy was. <laughs> they told me you have to register today. Yeah. Today is the cutoff date. Yeah. Then I called home, they sent me registration money mm -hmm. and registered. Mm -hmm. Then after registering, mm -hmm. On my way home in the taxi, I googled what metallurgy was. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah, I just got a brief meaning of what it was. Mm. And then I went to class, then I got a full understanding. They explained there's physical metallurgy mm -hmm. and extractive metallurgy. Mm -hmm. In extractive metallurgy, we extract uh, metals. And then in physical metallurgy, the metals that the extractive metallurgists have extracted, they study the, their properties and then they decide which this metal will be will, will work for the production of iron and steel or maybe mm. for aircrafts or whatever. Mm. Yeah, basically. Okay. Right. Wow. So before then, you never knew what metallurgy. Is. <laughs> okay. Like I've never but, okay. heard of it. So now, when you go to class and you found out what it was all about, did you then like it? Did, were you interested? Yes, I liked it because I I felt I was still extracting the minerals like mm. the miners do, though mm. I did not really understand how. Mm. And then, yeah, after they've explained the extraction, the physical, I decided look, I'll take the extraction route. Oh, so, so you have to choose one between the yeah. two. Yeah. yeah. First year, you can't do both. First semester, we did the same modules, yeah. basically first year, and then second year, we, we went Split. separate ways. Yeah. Mm. So now, um, now that you've, you've, you've chosen metallurgy mm -hmm. in varsity, what were the challenges or what what tip could you give to someone out there who's still studying? 
to be honest the course is charming mm. it charmed me i will not lie because i went to varsity with the mentality that i'm smart mm. people will tell me today that you are smart you can be anything that you want to be mm. so when i went with that mind it's unlike at, in high school when you, you could go write a test without uh, studying for it and still pass mm. Mm. there you have to put in the hard work for things for you to pass and mm. make progress yeah yeah so i wish i had known that before i enrolled yeah and that's the reason why most people um you find that they commit suicide yeah. because of the expectation that they, they have they think that it's going to be the same as high school since you're getting distinctions in high school you think True. it's going to be that easy in varsity and in varsity i feel like in varsity it tests that in all aspects you know yeah. you know, financially academic social yeah. everything you know True. so True. If you survive varsity, then maybe you can survive adult. <laughs> so now, um, currently, what are you doing? Okay, I'm a graduate metallurgist at AGA. Mm. Yeah, so I'm getting a lot of exposure. Mm -hmm. I, I did my P1, P2 in coal. Okay. In coal, it was just mineral processing. Okay, let me explain. In extractive metallurgy, mm -hmm. it has three um majors mm -hmm. it's either the plant is a mineral processing plant okay it's a hydrometallurgy plant or it's okay. a pyrometallurgy plant okay so mineral processing we're just crushing screening and then we are washing okay hydrometallurgy we use chemicals to dissolve to dissolve the metals okay and then in pyrometallurgy we use fire to get the metals mm -hmm. so the advantage with a uh, gold is that we apply all the three Mm. So it it makes you more relevant to the mm. industry. Okay, so I can work in a mineral processing plant. Mm. I can work in a hydrometallurgy plant, and mm. I can also work in a pyrometallurgy plant. Okay. Now that you you here currently mm. as a metallurgy trainee, mm. um, what 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 do you you said you did your P one P two right, yes. and you passed that, and then you got your qualification. After getting your qualification, you then became a metallurgy intern. No, after I did my P1, P2 at Denko, mm -hmm. I went back to UJ to do my BTEC. Mm -hmm. After my BTEC, I then came here at AGA for oh, my graduate program. Okay, okay. And then within your, your graduate program, what exactly do you do? Okay, so we measure the plant performance. Mm. Like, as soon as I get to work, there are log sheets that people that have been operating the plant while I was with, they fill in, they take samples and they they record that information. Mm. So when we come in, we look at that, mm. when we do troubleshooting, we identify areas that need um, attention now. Mm. And then we also talk to the control room operators to understand how the plant has been running, what challenges have they had, mm. how can we assist them. Mm. And then we sample a lot for quality control because yes. we need to know what we are feeding the plant, yes. what is coming out of the plant, yes. are we running the plant efficiently mm. or not. We run projects to improve the performance of the plant. Mm. You know, we are within our efficiencies, but we, we always want to improve. Mm. We want to make more money. Mm. Because at the end of the day, that's why we are at AGA. Of course. <laughs> of course. So in, 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 in varsity, you said you yeah. did all the, the other uh, modules that entail geology, um, that entail um, engineering as well. Mm -hmm. Take me through that. Okay, as a metallurgist, I don't know if it's fortunate or it's unfortunate. You are the first person they fire <laughs> because you hold the final product. Yeah. So for you to always get the final product right, mm. you have to have a little bit of knowledge of other departments. Mm. For example, I need to know geology as mm. a geologist, mm. so that I know the mineral, the metals that are coming with the metal that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. so that I'll know how to manipulate mm. for me mm. to get the metal of interest. Mm -hmm. I need to know your a little bit of mechanical engineering so that I understand when they say they are maintaining an equipment it will take that long. I have an idea and I can draw a picture for Absolutely. myself because they can easily lie to you and yeah. say we need um, two days to fix this equipment when they only need three hours to fix it. Mm -hmm. So you need to have the light in everything basically. Oh, okay so now uh, now that you, you did your, 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 your training do you feel what's what's the next step can you now be a metallurgist like a professional metallurgist or what's the what's the what's the hierarchy in terms of um, development 
terms oh, of degree. okay. For us, you don't really need a lot of things. Okay. When you have your degree, after your degree and you go through a graduate program, you, I think you are ready to mm. become a junior metallurgist mm. in another plant. You don't need any form of certificate or whatsoever. You can mm. do other courses that develop you, like the jump junior management, yes. where you get to learn how to work with people, mm. how to communicate how to and work. Teams and stuff. But your degree is sufficient mm. for your growth. Mm. So, but do you, you need relevant experience for you to become a junior metallurgist? Yes, you okay. must have at least three years experience. Mm. What 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 uh, job opportunities are there uh, for metallurgy graduates other than just being in the mining sector? Okay, other opportunities can be in academia. Mm. You can further your studies mm. and eventually become a lecturer or be in research. Mm. You can um, also work for consulting companies. Mm. But personally, I'd like to be a consultant someday. Okay. But personally, I want to first get production exposure mm. and improve my academics. Mm. So I'm going to apply both okay. so that I become a better consultant. So imagine if they say, um, maybe there's a problem in a plant. And then they say, uh, Dr. Mashoko is coming to, to address. <laughs> you see, it needs a little bit yes, of weight. Yes, that's the source of weight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when you have index, industry experience, mm. people will, will trust mm. you. Because you've worked, we've worked in the industry, yeah. you know the challenges and you understand what's happening there. Okay. And then you can be a production manager mm. if you want to be stressed for the rest of your life. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to ask that. Like, isn't it yeah. isn't it too much pressure being being a metallurgist in the in the, in the mining industry? It's, I mean, yeah. there's so many factors. I mean, there's mining um, that that they they want you to produce. Okay? They want you to give them their final product. And some there's this thing about the mine core factor. Yeah. Can you take us through that as well to understand okay. for someone who doesn't understand? Um, Okay. production. I don't know the mine coal factor, mm. but I know the plant coal factor. Okay. So what happens is that um, the plant coal factor is measured based on the mine coal factor that the miners calculate. Okay. So they, they will tell us, okay, we are giving you so many tons and mm. we are expecting Banking. so much gold. Yes. And then from the tons that they gave us, we start measuring and then we produce. So, okay. so how do you handle that? How do you handle uh, such pressure? I mean, for example, if someone from the mining department or geology department or production, whatever, comes and says, Jeanette, mm -hmm. this is your fault. <laughs> the reason why you should give us answers. Yeah. And um, how do you handle that? Uh, okay, we, we work with proof because mm. if we talk, mm they won't understand. Mm. So in on days when our uh, oil is very wet, maybe we might take pictures mm. but just in case we have to answer to okay. such things. Okay. And then maybe also take our own samples at the plant, do our own moisture analysis to, mm. to show them but that day it was not. Mm. So how can you expect so much from us? Oh, absolutely. So in terms of your, your career development, what yeah. other things are you doing on the side other than you being in this graduate program? What other things are you doing on the side to ensure that you get to the, 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 the level that you want to get get to? Okay. I had registered for my master's degree. Oh, all right. But then, uh, okay, I, 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 I wrote my proposal, I defended my proposal. When I had to start my practical work, it was, it was demanding. Mm. Because I had to be at AGA and B at the other lab. So things were just clashing so mm -hmm. i decided i'll drop my masters for now mm -hmm. and take on work because it's very work is scarce mm -hmm. right, with the high employment yeah, in our yeah, country absolutely. so i decided studying i can study whenever mm -hmm. i can just go and register but i need to get the industry exposure mm -hmm. so at the moment i am fully focused on getting the plant exposure mm -hmm. okay okay and then um one last thing, um, what in terms of uh, metallurgy, for someone who wants to start study metallurgy out there, what would you say to them? Yeah, you must be ready to work mm. very hard, mm. you must be patient, mm. know that you, you, are, you might encounter failure, mm. just remember that failing means your first attempt in learning, mm. so you must always try again until you get it right. Mm. And then what keeps you going when I yourself uh, as Jeanette, what keeps you going to say, even if there are challenges and obstacles on the way, uh, uncertainties, because there's so many uncertainties in this life, but what keeps you going to say, 
keep pushing and waking up early because yeah she wakes up <laughs> early every day oh. even when it's not necessary <laughs> what keeps you going what wakes you up early in the morning okay yeah first to keep going you need god like mm. you need to have a lot of faith mm. you need to pray yeah and then other than that i love to read i read a lot mm. so i uh, i read this book yeah by robin sharma the 5 a.m club so what's in this book basically it's the 2020 20 rule mm. so it says that the first hour when you wake up in the morning mm. here it's 5 a.m but i do 4 a.m because i go to work early mm. so i wake up at 4 a.m the first 20 minutes i exercise mm. and then the second 20 minutes it's meditation mm-hmm. where you just listen to yourself mm. no social media nothing mm. And then the last 20 minutes, you can listen to an audio book or motivational videos or whatever that you prepare, or you can read a book. That's okay. the time to read, basically. Okay. Yeah. And then after that hour, believe you me, your life is just different. You are happier because you exercise. You are more positive because you listen to something positive. It's, that's basically wow. what's keeping me going. So wow. f- for you to up to, to apply the 60 60 rule mm. you need 60 i think 66 days okay to learn the habit okay so and it gets you to it yeah so it it becomes automatic yeah. that's why i wake up even when i don't need to wake wow up. Yeah. wow that's good that's good that's incredible but otherwise um thank you so much uh jeanette for coming to the show uh, where can people find you on social media if they want <laughs> like on LinkedIn uh, if they want to ask you more questions or they need some guidelines or mentorship or whatever the case might be oh okay I, I'm a bit socially awkward <laughs> so I only have LinkedIn and yeah. Facebook yeah. Facebook I, I don't post much mm. LinkedIn yeah I do follow other people mm. yeah. okay so what's your name on LinkedIn I'm Jeanette Mashero okay. even on, on Facebook Jeanette, it's Jeanette Mashero. Mashero okay yeah. no thank you so much uh, for coming Jeanette uh, if you guys have any questions please leave them on the section below and uh, we'll make sure that Jeanette answers those questions otherwise please don't forget to like subscribe to the channel for me it's Mulanita cheers guys bye <laughs>